Today we are starting the story that is on page 154 of your um, your language arts book. So that's that hard book with the, um, the beaver on the front with the pants. And um, Animal Park is literary nonfiction. Can you please point to the title? There it is. Please point to the author. There she is, Judy Nair. Literary nonfiction is about real places and events told like a story. Next, you will read about some wild animals in Africa. Africa is a continent on planet Earth, and um, just like North America is a continent, Africa is quite far away from the United States and from North America, um, but it is a really interesting place to learn about. And um, today, we are going to answer this question as we read. What can we learn about wild animals by watching them? So firstly, do you know what these are? Elephants. Very good. So um, the, these are African elephants from Africa. Here's something kind of interesting about African elephants. Look at the shape of the ear of the African elephant, and then look at the shape of Africa. It looks the same. So that's one of the ways you can tell the difference between an Asian elephant and an African elephant. Asian elephants have... Um, have small ears, and African elephants have an, an, an elephant ear in the shape of Africa. All right, let's keep going. Okay, please read these two pages. If you're still reading, pause me now. The hot sun is up at camp. Camp is in a big, big park. See, camp? This land is home to many animals. Can we see them? Yes, just get in the truck. What's this? Hippo, hippopotamus. We have some antelope. A baboon, and then this guy, giraffe. Okay, please read these two pages. Okay, if you're still reading, pause me now. Bump, bump, bump. Notice the ump part of our fill it up. Quick stop. A band of zebras runs past us. They blend, blend into the grass, grass. So, here we see a band of zebras. A band of zebras is officially called a dazzle because they dazzle you as they run past. So one of the things that we try to do when we're listening to stories or when we're reading to stories on our own is we want to keep in mind what happens first, second, third, and so on. So if we remember in the beginning, what was the first thing that the people did? They set up camp and then they hopped in the in the truck, that's it. So the first animal, well, some of the first animals they see are zebras, and now we're going to learn about these lionesses. Big cats rest up. They had a big hunt. Cubs can bat at bugs. Why are these lions so tired? Well, it says here they had a big hunt. Well, most of the time it's the lioness of the tribe that will do the hunting and so they can be quite tired. Also, kitty cats and lions can sleep 20 to 20 hours out of the 24 hours in a day, so they sleep a lot. Here are some cubs and they're batting at bugs. Uh, to bat at something is something that kittens do and also regular cats and lions and tigers, they do with their hands. It's called a, to bat, to kind of um, to play with them. My cats, goose will bat 
at this string that we have that we shake in front of him and he'll bat at it like this. And when he gets really mad at it, he just goes at it with his claws. Have you ever seen a cat do that? Okay, please read these two pages. If you need more time, pause me now. Big birds st and in tan grass grass. They can run fast. Big hippos hippos sit in wet mud. It is hot, but mud is not hot. Do you know what this animal is? It's an ostrich. Now, why do hippos like the water and like mud? What does that tell you about the weather and the climate of Africa where they live? Africa can be quite warm, especially where the hippos like to live. And so they like to live near mud and wet areas. The mud is not hot, and so it actually keeps them cool. They also put mud on their bodies as a natural way to protect against the sun, like hippo sunblock. Okay, please read these two pages. If you need more time, pause me now. Big L F ants. P H makes the f sound. Elephants stand and sip in the pond. They can stomp, stomp, and swim in it. Bump, bump, bump. The truck truck is back at camp. This park park is home to many animals. Animals. It was fun to see them. So you'll notice that these hippos are traveling in a herd. Here we have our zebra and our gorilla. We have a lion and there are the trucks that we traveled in. So I have a couple of questions for you. The first one is to look at the word many. So that's one of our high frequency words that we studied. Let's look at this full sentence. This park is home to many animals. What is another word we could put instead of the word many? We could put lots. Lots is another type. You might have thought of a different word. This park is home to lots of animals. If we think about the word many, we're thinking about a great number of animals. So even that would mean something. Um, and what we're doing when we say lots and many and, and um, a bunch is another term, we are using something called synonyms. Synonyms are words that mean the same thing, even though they're different words. And so sometimes when Mr. Smith is writing something for you guys, I'll say to myself, I don't want to say the same word over and over. I don't want to say many, 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 many. So I'll try to think of other words that mean the same thing as many in order to make it more interesting. Now let's look, and I want you to think about this question. Just a few weeks ago, we read a story called A Fox and a Kit. I want you to think about how was the story A Fox and a Kit similar to this story, Animal Park? What were some things that were similar and what were some things that are different? Well, I can think of one off the top of my head. This is an animal park zoo. So this is a wide open area that is protected, but animals live in the wild. They do not live in enclosures. So they are allowed to walk freely. In the fox and a kit, if we remember, they have an enclosure at a zoo. And so they're not able to walk freely, but they do have a large area for them to roam. So something different and then something similar. Well, this is for wild animals and that zoo is for wild animals. Those foxes are not tame. They, do, they may get their food from the people, but the people are not to trust the animals because the animals 
are not like dogs and cats. They are not going to be, they're not going to say, oh, well, people, they're my friend. They are going to be a little nervous around us, so we have to be careful. All right, think of a few more things to compare those two stories. And um, I'm, this, actually, this story always makes me excited because it reminds me that hopefully we'll get to visit the zoo this year all together. And um, even if we don't get to visit all together, we'll still, uh, we'll, we are still going to do a big animal study and we'll get to learn about all these different types of animals. Well, I really look forward to that, guys. Hope you've enjoyed your reading and I'll see you soon.